The situation surrounding the coronavirus is changing rapidly. Try to make sure you wash your hands, prevent touching your faces. Though the public health threat in Maryland remains low, every level of government is working diligently to prepare for all possible scenarios. I want to assure you that we are prepared to prevent and limit the spread of coronavirus in our community. The situation surrounding Welcome the to the City of Laurel's second virtual town hall on the coronavirus or COVID-19. I'm Communications Director Audrey Barnes. This has been the deadliest 72 hours in the state of Maryland for the COVID-19 coronavirus to date. Nearly 400 people have died and the numbers are growing. We want to applaud each and every one of you for what you're doing to slow the spread of COVID-19. And we're doing our part also. That's why there is no audience here tonight, just a few people scattered around the room to be with us tonight. Our panelists are also spread out so that we can maintain the proper social distance from each other. And just like we did during our first virtual town hall last month, we are inviting you to participate. We wanna make this a two-way conversation. So there are a number of ways that you can get involved with us tonight. You can call in your questions. And that phone number is 240-294-1308. You can also email us a question at laureloem at laurel.md.us. OEM, by the way, stands for Office of Emergency Management. And you can also put a question under the Facebook Live feed on the City of Laurel Government Facebook page. We also have another post at the top of the page if you want to just leave a comment there. We'll try to search around and find them either way. So now let me introduce our panelists tonight. Uh, joining us is Laurel Mayor Craig A. Moe. Thank you, Mayor. Dr. Joseph Wright is here from the University of Maryland Capital Region Health. Thank you, Dr. Wright. Uh, Stephen Allen is our emergency manager. Thank you, Steve, for being here. Dr. Uzo Unebu is the City of Laurel's health officer. Thank you, Dr. Yu. We appreciate you being here. And Laurel Police Chief Russell Hamill III is with us tonight as well. Thank you all for being here. So much has happened since our first virtual town hall on March 12th. Let's take a look at the numbers. There are 10,784 cases of the coronavirus in Maryland and 392 deaths in our state. There is a little bit of good news though. 736 Marylanders have recovered from COVID-19 and been released from isolation. Let's get the very latest tonight from Mayor Mo. Mayor? Uh, thank you, Audrey. Uh, I do want to acknowledge uh, a couple of our council members that are in the audience with us as well as our council member, Valerie Nicholas is with us as well as council member, uh, Mike Les. So thank you all for being here. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in to tonight for our second virtual town hall meeting regarding COVID-19 uh, pandemic. I do want to acknowledge the hardworking city employees for all of their efforts in preparing for and addressing the needs of the community during this very rapidly changing environment. To all of our police, fire, rescue, EMS, and other first responders, to our nurses and doctors and their support teams, thank you all very much for your dedication and your sacrifice you have made. We send each of you a virtual hug and we say thank you during these very difficult times. Each of you have made a difference in the lives of many in the Laurel community. And again, your service um, has been acknowledged here tonight and we thank you. To the residents of the Laurel community, I wanna thank you and acknowledge your patience and understanding. Many of you have volunteered to assist to, and to work with us and I appreciate that greatly. The situation surrounding the COVID-19 is changing rapidly and your city is continuing to adjust. We have implemented a 90% staff reduction of city employees at the Municipal Center. We have enhanced our telework program to permit staff to work from home. Currently, we have 60 staff members working from their homes. A 50% reduction at the Department of Public Works while they're still providing the essential services. Our police department has maintained adequate staffing levels. 
to meet the needs of the community and maintain officer safety. City playgrounds and facilities continue to be closed and homeowners associations were directed to have playgrounds closed as well. All city basketball courts and areas around the courts continue to be closed and the homeowners associations were directed to close their basketball courts as well. As I've mentioned to you at our last virtual town hall meeting, we continue to prepare for the worst and always hope for the best. Our emergency manager, Steve Allen, continues to monitor and to work with our public safety and our public health officials at the county, state, and federal levels of government. Steve continues to coordinate with city, our city health officers who are with us tonight mm -hmm. and follows the guidance from the CDC, the state and county public health departments. On a personal note, I want to thank Steve publicly. His dedication to his work and his coordination with city departments, organizations, and other EOCs uh, around the county uh, during these very difficult times. So Steve, again, thank you very much. City departments continue to follow their uh, contingency plans and their coronavirus workforce action plan that provides guidance and procedures for keeping our employees safe and the community safe as well. I can't thank our communications department enough. They also do an outstanding job pushing out the same critical messages and information from the CDC, the Maryland State Health Department, and the Prince George's County Health Department regarding the pandemic. And they're doing a lot of others, which I'll talk about a little bit later in my remarks. Tonight, we take additional steps to continue our efforts to keep the public updated and prepared during this pandemic. This is why I'm glad you have joined us tonight for our second town hall meeting regarding the pandemic, an important discussion between our community partners and your government. As this is our second virtual interactive town hall meeting, I encourage everyone to take part by calling, emailing us, or sending a message on Facebook Live. Tonight you will again hear from the experts in the field of public health and uh, emergency management. I wanna thank our panelists tonight again for their time and their assistance and being part of the solution to help uh, us along here in the city of Laurel. Please remember that I don't want anyone to panic. We understand the unknown is scary and creates anxiety. We at city government are ready to assist you in your time of need. We have an action plan and we stand ready to assist. I want to thank Governor Hogan and County Executive Alsa Brooks for their leadership and transparency in ensuring that the state, county, and local communities are safe. Your city officials will be following and enforcing the governors, the county executives, and my executive orders, directives, and policies so that we can help sl slow the spread of this deadly virus. These orders will be enforced by the Laurel Police Department and the staff at the Office of the Fire Marshal and Permit Services, and those in violation will be held accountable. Tonight, I wanna to pass along some information to you that I believe is useful and very important. And the first is again to remind you to take the time to fill out your census form. We have 47.7% uh, of self-response to the census you can see that it is critical um, and it's very important. So please take that time. President Sidnor has announced that the mayor and city council meetings will hold their uh, meeting on Monday, April the 27th at 6 p.m. The city budget will be introduced for FY21 that night. The second public hearing uh, will be on uh, Monday, May the 4th at 6 p.m. We will be using GoToMeeting for the public so that they can take part and participate. So look for further information as we get closer to the 27th. All of the work sessions will be on the same dates and they will start at 5.30. On Saturday, April the 8th, starting at 7 a.m., the governor's executive order will go into effect for everyone, requiring the use of face coverings and, and um, making sure that um, your nose and your mouth are covered. Um, the entire um, executive order will be placed on the city's website so you can check it out. But if you're out and about, we just encourage you to go ahead and put that on. Um, it, it will be required by all. We have established several telephone hotlines that can assist our residents if they have questions or need assistance. 
Our emergency operations center is 240-294-1314. Senior, our senior information hotline is 240-517-7974. Our business information hotline is 301-356-3876. And we also have our Spanish hotline uh, for information set up as well at 240-805-3167. All of those numbers are on our website as well. We also have started a healthcare gratitude challenge on so our social media platforms. Let us know if you have a special healthcare worker that you'd like for us to acknowledge and thank. Send us their photo and their name to social media at laurel.md.us. I announced that uh, we will be canceling the city's 150th celebration events through June to include the annual Main Street Festival schedule for May the 9th. We will work hard to reschedule this event before the year's out if it is safe to do so. Please check out our virtual family fun page located on the website includes virtual events and activities for the entire family. We've established a chat with the senior citizens. Three times a week, we'll send out reminders for you to call your senior relatives or friends at 7.30 to check on them and to connect with them. We'll also be asking senior citizens who'd like to be called on Sunday nights at 7.30 p.m. to sign up in our program. I'd like to uh, also acknowledge the volunteers that have already uh, called and, and offered their services um, on a weekly call. If you'd like to take part in that, you can call 301-725-5300, extension 2110. Or you can also send an email to cmjohnson at laurel.md.us. I encourage you to follow along on one of our many different platforms on social media to be informed and updated. Time is never on our side when dealing with an emergency, but tonight I would like for all of you to know that you have a city council, a management team, a dedicated employees, making sure that Laurel's able and ready for what may come next. We call them Team Laurel. We have a long way to go and it will require all of us working together. Remember to stay home, to cover up, to help save lives. On behalf of the Mayor and City Council, thank you for tuning in tonight. We look forward to your questions, and I want to remind everyone that we're all in this together. Thank you. Thanks, all. Thank you very much, Mayor Mo. Words to live by. We are all in that all together, together, all in this together. The City of Laurel's Health Officer, Dr. Uzo Unebu, is with us tonight. And Dr. Unebu, I want to just talk about what's happening here in Prince George's County, Maryland. Um, there are more cases of COVID-19 in Prince George's County than any other place in the state. First of all, why is that? And, and what can we do to stop the spread here? Thank you, Audrey. And um, Mayor, um, council members um, of the right. Yeah, actually, the, the, this is becoming a problem for us. Um, there are high numbers of uh, mortality and mobility um, of this uh, COVID-19 uh, due to there's more testing that we're having now, um, which we have actually a testing center of uh, the FedEx uh, Stadium. And um, another reason is uh, in PG County, the residents are in the service industry um, and healthcare, which makes more expo exposure for them. Uh, lastly, we're seeing a lot of asymptomatic people spreading the virus. So with all these in combination, it's actually making the numbers to be higher. Um, to slow the virus down, um, it actually requires a, a, a behavioral change for all of us, uh, more of a stricter practice of social distancing, uh, frequent hand washing uh, should be enforced, uh, which in turn limit the spread. And adhering to the declarations that we've been hearing from the governor, from the county exec, and from the mayor, um, just this is the, one of the ways uh, to be able to slow down the spread, um, as the mayor had actually mentioned earlier today. Now, we've all seen the videos from 
doctors and nurses and anyone in the hospital. They're really heartbreaking stories that they're sharing with us. What are you hearing from uh, your colleagues in the healthcare field here in Laurel? Oh, yeah, um, it's heart-wrenching, like you said. Um, my colleagues, they share same uh, sentiments across the globe uh, regarding the need for adequate PPEs and more testings. Um, the demand for these equipments outweighs actually the production of them. Uh, the need for beds in Laurel has been approved by uh, the governor, uh, Hogan, and uh, thanks to UMS uh, for being able to uh, fill in the gaps for some of these demands too. So is there anything else we can do to help? Wow. Um, well, the best way, I, I think we've been saying that all along, is stay home. Uh, right now we're mentioning cover-up, um, but there are other things that I, I would recommend. Um, first is um, that the transmission is controlled. And then second is that the health system uh, capacity, capacity is in the place to detect tests, isolate and treat every case, and trace every contact. And third is um, that the, break, the outbreak risks are minimized in special settings like health facilities and in the nursing homes, like I go to nursing homes too. Um, and then fourth is that the preventive measures are in place in the workplace, in schools, and other places where it's essential for people to go, like in the shopping malls. Uh, and then fifth is that the communities are fully educated, engaged, empowered, and to adjust to the new norm. Thank you very much for sharing all that great information um, and for helping us weather this, this coronavirus storm over the last few weeks. We appreciate all the help that you've been giving the city. Thank you. Um, the City of Laurel's Emergency Manager, Steve Allen, stood up our emergency operation here at the Laurel Municipal Center 42 days ago, and he's been working tirelessly ever since then to help keep us safe, all of our citizens, our employees, and visitors here to Laurel. And Steve is with us tonight to share the very latest um, as we prepare for the surge, which is still a couple of weeks away in Maryland, isn't it, Steve? Yeah, as soon as I fix my hearing aid, I'll be okay. <laughs> yes, that's correct, Audrey, and thank you very much, and Mr. Mayor and Council members and everyone in the room and everyone in the Laurel area. This is a long-term incident. Uh, like Audrey said, the uh, Emergency Operations Center here in the city has been operating for 42 straight days um, with uh, personnel, uh, working both in the EOC and City Hall and teleworking. Uh, a couple of our main objectives is our seniors to, to look after and take care of them, provide them with whatever they need. And then we're doing that through the senior hotline. Also the businesses, both small and large, we're working with them to, to meet their needs as much as possible. Another important project that we're working on is food distribution within the city and the Laurel, Laurel area. We're working with LARS, the Laurel Advocacy and Referral Services, the Fish of Laurel, Elizabeth House, St. Mary and Mills Catholic Church, and the Islamic Community Center of Laurel, and First Baptist Church of Laurel. Uh, we have formed a Food Distribution Task Force, um, and this task force has been meeting regularly. We just finished our first uh, report, and, and we handed it, gave it to the mayor today. It uh, gives a, a uh, total look at the food distribution in the city uh, for the homeless, for the needy, for the disadvantaged, and for anybody who needs food. Um, the, we identify shortfalls. We're working with all them organizations to both address the shortfalls. And now starting tomorrow, on, uh, we're gonna start looking into the long-term uh, food distribution. Uh, we'll be coordinating with them uh, with the delivery of both meals and water. And uh, we're setting up a strong distribution system with the help of all volunteers and of course the city staff. Uh, we continue to coordinate with Prince George's County, with the state of Maryland, with both FEMA and, and the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, we uh, uh, 
sit in on about five or six conference calls a day to exchange information with the county, with other, other municipalities, with the state and with the feds, all working in collaborative efforts to, to slow the spread of this vicious disease. We're ready to assist any citizen in law or the law area um, if they need help. Please call the, the hotline numbers that the mayor uh, announced earlier. Uh, these are answered. Uh, we get right back to whoever um, asks a question or has uh, anything th that they need. Uh, we pride ourselves in being able to handle almost 99% uh, of the requests to come in on all of them lines. We don't know if you don't call in. If you got a question, we uh, field a lot of questions about testing and, and COVID-19 testing. We have uh, the French George's County Health Department's hotline, which is 301-883-6627. They are getting in a tremendous amount of calls specifically about testing. Uh, Prince George's County has a test site set up at FedEx Field. Uh, you have to have an appointment to go there, but uh, if you need information, please call that hotline. If you can't get through the hotline, contact us and we'll assist with that. We have a, a very d committed and dedicated emergency management team led by Mayor Mo, and uh, we're here for the long duration. Um, we are ready to assist, and uh, we'll do anything that we possibly can to assist. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Steve. We appreciate that. Uh, we want to take a phone call now um, because we want to let you know that we are listening. We're waiting for your questions, and it's very important that we hear from you. So um, before you give us your questions, just make sure you turn down your television so we don't get a lot of feedback. But caller, um, go ahead with your question. Yes, I have a question. As we move into the weeks ahead, uh, as a citizen of Laurel, what can we expect to see taking place at the Laurel Hospital? You know, we're all concerned with treatment. Dr. Joseph Wright is here from the University of um, Maryland Capital Region Health. That includes the Laurel um, Medical Center. Dr. Wright, is you ready to tackle that question for us tonight? Certainly, and um, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Mayor Mo and the council for hosting this town hall. A lot has indeed happened since we were last together, um, including the uh, uh, recommissioning of the Laurel Medical Center to receive patients on the inpatient basis. Um, the project to um, create 135 beds at the Laurel Medical Center, which we refer to as the Laurel 345 project because we're building those beds on the third, fourth, and fifth floor of the Laurel Medical Center, is scheduled to open next week. Uh, we have been hard at work as a health system, the University of Maryland Capital Region Health, to um, restore those floors. Uh, those 135 beds at this point are designated to include 10 critical care beds, uh, 12 intermediate care beds, and um, uh, 113 uh, med surge beds. And uh, the goal here is to meet the, the surge demand. Um, Audrey, you asked uh, Dr. Negbu a moment ago, um, are, are we in the surge? It certainly feels like it. I, I will tell you that in the weeks since we were last together, the crush of patients that have been seen across all of our campuses um, here in Laurel, in Chevrolet and in Bowie um, has really uh, escalated, and particularly here in the last week. Um, all told, over the course of the last several weeks, we have tested um, almost 1,000 patients coming through our health system. Uh, 313 of those patients have tested positive, and if you do that math, that is something like 30% have tested positive. That's a high number. Um, in the zip codes that uh, constitute uh, Laurel in Prince George's County, 25 patients have tested positive. So we have a, a burden of disease here uh, locally that obviously has already been stated, uh, makes us the epicenter of the state, um, but also the uh, uh, 
great concern is the are the number of patients who are presenting with um, uh, either pre-existing or comorbid conditions, which is the way we describe it. And uh, what I mean by that is um, we have a large population who have underlying conditions, heart disease, diabetes, and uh, those conditions uh, with the added burden of the uh, coronavirus makes it even a more difficult challenge and makes the need, particularly for critical care beds, uh, of great demand. So um, we believe uh, that the, to answer the caller's question, that the, um, these beds, these 135 beds, um, uh, couldn't open soon enough. Uh, this is a partnership with, the, with Governor Hogan and the Maryland Department of Health and the University of Maryland Medical System to uh, stand these beds up. And um, uh, Dr. Trudy Hall, well known in this community, who is the site executive for Laurel Medical Center is, is leading the charge on that effort and we'll be excited next week to get this open and up and running. I'm sure that answers a lot of questions for residents who might have driven by the campus and seen those white tents going up and wondering what was going to go on there at the campus. But we're getting ready for the surge. Yes, we are. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Wright. Um, I do have a question that came in off uh, Facebook Live, and this caller would like to know, as you say, if we haven't quite reached the peak yet, will there be further reduction of businesses in operation, or has the reopening process um, begun at all in, in Laurel? Uh, the reopening of business and the government, actually we were talking about that um, earlier today. There is no plans as of yet. We will continue to watch and work with, um, as I stated earlier, with um, uh, our emergency manager, Steve Allen, who's communicating with all different levels of government. Um, but as of yet, there's no um, nothing in the works for businesses starting to open up. When we talk about government, we're still operating, we're still open, we're still answering phones. Uh, people are working from home, and um, there's uh, just a very uh, small, uh, probably two or three of us here that are at um, City Hall. Um, but all departments are open, and we're still, and uh, we'll be answering questions. But as of this date, there's nothing, unless Steve has anything further on that. And Mayor Mo, that seems to be on the minds of many people tonight. We just got an email on our Laurel OEM at laurel.md.us email address, and the person was asking, what is the timeline for us getting back to normal? I think you've explained that, that we're, we're a long way from that. Probably. I would like to see it sooner rather than later, but I don't think that's going to be, uh, that's not the answer. So um, we'll continue to monitor the situations and we'll work with uh, all levels of government uh, before we do anything. We'll do what's right and we'll do what's uh, in the best interest of our community. Thank you, Mayor Mel. As the spread of the coronavirus continues across the country, police officers, first responders continue to be on the front lines, and that is very true here in Laurel as well. And joining us tonight to tell us about how we're protecting our officers is Laurel's police chief, uh, Russell Hamill III. Thank you, Chief, for being here tonight. Thank you, Audrey. I appreciate it. So I'm very close to the doctor. I'll keep my mask on. We're going to we're going to spread you guys out a little bit. I'm doctor, much more handsome with this way. mask on. I'm told. <laughs> so um, first off, uh, I do want to say, uh, even though we're here for a very solemn discussion, today is a uh, celebration in my family. Today is the birthday of my middle son, who's watching this right now. So I want to say happy birthday, Dylan, and I love you. And um, it's uh, part of what we do is for kids like you, yes. bud. So we're uh, working hard. The Laurel Police Department's working hard. Um, we're still out there. We still have some instances of crime occurring and we're taking care of that. We, we're, sta we're still out there um, protecting and serving the community. Don't hesitate to contact us. Don't hesitate to call us. Um, we are seeing an uptick in calls regarding violation of the executive orders by the mayor and by the governor. We respond to those as well. Um, the, uh, we've taken an approach with this that we will inform and educate before we enforce. So um, we want to provide the information. We want to provide the education to people of what the guidelines are. Um, and uh, before we want to do any enforcement steps. Thus far, every time we've done this, on every complaint we've had, every time we've come across this, 
people have complied with what the, the requirements of the executive orders are. I want to thank the community for that. Normally what we're seeing is people just don't understand what's required of them. Once they learn it from our officers, it works out. So thank you to the community and people that visit Laurel for doing that. We greatly appreciate it. The, um, I do want to thank um, my, my officers uh, and my civilian staff. As you know, um, we've had uh, a few instances, um, exactly um, 11 of our last count of our, our staff that have been exposed to the virus and have been out of work. Uh, very unfortunately, we've had one that tested positive. Um, they're doing well now, thank God. Um, but we've had at some stage um, up to 11 out because of the virus and being exposed to it. Um, the, the one that tested positive is not back yet. Nine others are back and one is pending coming back. But we're actually set up our communications division inside City Hall uh, in Steve's shop over at Emergency Operations because of an issue in our own communication section on the police department. And I do want to thank Rec and Parks. They've cleaned that very thoroughly three or four times now. And we'll be back operational at, Rec and, uh, at uh, um, headquarters tomorrow for communications. I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the doctor. He's been very helpful, gave great guidance to us to help get us through that. People are scared. Mm -hmm. This leads to, uh, um, you know, we're, we're not immune from that. Very calmly helped our people, helped get us through this. And, and uh, I'm very, very thankful for that. Chief, can I ask you one question where you're getting a lot of it in all our different platforms about the Amish market? Um, people are asking, ha have we been checking it? Um, there's a lot, seem to be a lot of people in the Amish market. So, can we just kind of spread the word about that? Because I know I get calls uh, on my cell phone about it and the police yes. department, our code enforcement, the mayor gets them. So what's the situation? We're, we're getting these phone calls. We are, get, we are getting calls for service there. Um, uh, code enforcement's been there. My officers have been there. Uh, one of my captains was there a number of times this past Saturday, which is the day before Easter, which um, we did get uh, uh, a number of calls about there. I have been there myself and gone into the market to make sure that things were okay. We have not witnessed any violations of any of the executive orders when we've been in there, but we are listening to the concerns of the community. Um, code enforcement and my staff have had discussions with the owner um, and we are hopeful that we'll see uh, absolute compliance going forward to help maintain the safety of the entire community to be able to, to go in there, do what they need to do, shop, but do so safely and respectful of each other. And we'd like to see that uh, go forward this weekend when they open. But don't hesitate to call us. Don't hesitate to inform us of it. And we'll, we're glad to go out. That's what we're here for. We'll go out. We'll see what's actually occurring. We'll take action if we need to take action. We need to educate and form. We do that. We've done that there. And we're hopeful that going forward, we don't have any more instances of concerns there. Um, not only are we out here in the protecting, protecting and serving, um, and, and we don't just do crime fighting. I, I do want to point out that this past weekend, members of my staff delivered food to some members of the community from the police department. And when I just left, they were organizing clothing to go over to Lars. Um, this evening or tomorrow to help out there. But also, I want to thank members of our community. When I left, one of my young officers was walking in with boxes of pizza, that uh, armfuls of boxes of pizza, and a citizen had stopped by to deliver those to the police department to make sure the men and women that are serving you were okay, that they were being fed. We've had uh, lunch delivered to us a couple of times as well. I really cannot thank the members of our community that, that think of us during, it would be completely natural for people to be only concerned with themselves and their families right now. There's, there's real fear here, but not here in Laurel. People in Laurel are reaching out to the police department to make sure that your police officers and civilian staff are taken care of. I sincerely thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. It means a tremendous amount to us. Thank you very much, Chief. I Chief, I want to get to this question um, on our Laurel OEM email address. This is kind of tugging at my heartstream, so I want to make sure that the person is still with us and we can get an answer. Um, one of the doctors probably is, is best prepared to answer this one. 
Um, and, and then, Chief, I'll let you finish, but I just want to make sure I don't lose them. Um, this person is asking, I am a person with a dying parent in another city. Can you clarify the stay at home, stay at home order? Does that mean I can't fly? Doctors, any, any guidance that we can give this viewer tonight about um, that situation? Well, uh, Audrey, let me speak to the um, um, no visitation policy that's been implemented at hospitals across the country. And one of the uh, exceptions to the no visitation rules, obviously, is a situation like this. And um, I, I would certainly encourage um, the, uh, the viewer, uh, the person who submitted the question, to ensure, first of all, that uh, the institution that they will be traveling to to visit their uh, relative at the, who is at the end of life uh, does um, uh, honor that ability to spend that time at end of life. Uh, this is, um, again, uh, a policy that's been uniformly um, applied across the country. However, I will tell you that certainly for the University of Maryland medical system, um, this is a situation where, uh, an exception, again, uh, the individual will need to, if this is a COVID situation, uh, be in uh, uh, proper protective equipment. The ability to get there um, is, is, is out of my um, area of expertise, but uh, I would encourage our citizen to uh, make sure that the, the um, uh, institution or wherever their loved one is, um, does honor that ability to uh, to visit. Thank you very much, Dr. Wright. Um, Chief Hamill, I know you are finishing up your remarks. I want to go ahead and give you an opportunity to do that. Um, I'll, I'll just close out with that. Um, we follow us on social media, follow Audrey and OEM on social media. We give out a lot of information there on the police um, Facebook and um, Twitter accounts. Um, and a lot of information about what's going on in the community that can help uh, uh, provide you guys um, with timely and accurate information to help dispel rumors that start up in the community, that start up, uh, as I said, naturally th this, in these times this happens. You'll get accurate information by following us on these social media platforms and um, hopefully that helps calm people down. Thank you all for the time. Audrey, thank you for letting me uh, talk. Mayor, thank you very much. Chief Hamill, are, are your officers uh, enforcing the stay-at-home rule um, here in Laurel? Like if you see people just milling around in groups and things like that, will, will the officers approach them and um, tell so, them you're, you're under an order by the governor to stay at home? As I mentioned, we do an education and inform method first, and we've had no issues other than that. Um, when, when we go to that outside of once we do the education piece and we inform people everything turns out okay so um, I know myself I talked to a couple people the park was closed I talked to a couple people down at the, at the park who were or, who were um, sitting on some benches and the like and just explained to them parks closed and it, it, it people want to do the right thing people naturally want to do the right thing here and so, and it's looking out for their welfare and the welfare of their families. So we're, we're finding that things are working out. Okay, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Just want to acknowledge some of the comments that we're seeing on Facebook. Uh, thank you, uh, Rick Wilson, Carol Plotnick. They have kudos for Steve Allen and, and all that you're doing in the EOC. So I uh, wanted to give you a shout out from Rick Wilson and Carol. Uh, Mayor Mo, uh, this person on Facebook says, thank you, Mayor Mo and the city of Laurel for all that you're doing to keep everyone safe and healthy. So that's a, I, I'm glad to see that people appreciate all that you're doing and that we have some good news to share tonight. Um, so can we talk a little bit about um, being outside at these times? Um, we're under a stay at, or, uh, stay at home order, but you can go out for essential services and things like getting groceries, t going to the doctor. If you need to take a short exercise break or walk your dog, that's all good. Who wants to tackle that question for us tonight? Yes, that's fine. The only thing that you have to remember is still 
have your social distancing. So if you're walking with a loved one, you're still supposed to maintain the social distancing. If you go to any of the stores, your grocery stores, uh, any of the big box stores, the pharmacies or whatever, uh, be cognizant of the fact that now you need a mask to go in. Um, and also, once you go in, you have to maintain your social distancing inside the establishment. And also, um, it's best that not only you have a mask, but I would suggest take a pair of gloves. If you have a pair of gloves, and that way you, you're very well protected. Uh, also, once you get home, especially from the grocery store, and, and you take all your stuff out, throw your bags away, make sure that you, you can disinfect the stuff that you bring home, uh, and also make sure you wash your hands real good after you get done to be on the safe side. Thank you very much. Um, I saw a picture from the Laurel Medical Center of some of the doctors and their handmade um, face coverings. Dr. Wright, are you seeing that, that um, some of the staff are coming in with their own masks and things like that? Um, is there, tell, walk, work us through this. Um, is any mask good enough, um, these paper ones, or is that any better than, or any safer if I would have one made of cloth, like a bandana or something? So, um, so I'm wearing a, a cloth mask, and I'm wearing a cloth mask. Um, and my, um, my role as an administrator is not bringing me in direct patient contact in the hospital, so I am uh, I'm safe wearing a cloth mask. This is basically to protect um, uh, uh, people from me. Um, for our workers, so that is a lowest level of, um, of, um, of, of, of covering. Second level would be individuals who are in patient contact and they wear a surgical medical grade mask, um, similar to some of the masks that, um, uh, for instance, the mask that Mayor Mo is wearing tonight. And then for our workers who are involved in invasive procedures, uh, for someone who has to go on a ventilator, for instance, uh, there is a, the highest level of personal protective equipment that is worn. So um, I, I do want to, first of all, I would be remiss with regard to, acknowledge, not, to acknowledging the public, because this is a mask that was made by a citizen uh, for our, our, our medical center. And they are continuing to produce masks for our, um, our non-clinical and administrative personnel. The other way we're using these, um, these masks as well is to protect the medical grade mask. As you know, uh, there is a, um, a, a, um, a pipeline shortage with regard to the production of uh, uh, personal protective equipment. And by wearing a um, cloth mask over the top of an, an N95, that's the um, medical grade mask that most of our nurses on our COVID units wear, you extend the life of that medical grade mask. So there are many uses for the cloth mask, um, not the least of which it has brought a great deal of, um, of camaraderie. Our, first, our, our workforce is, is very, very um, uh, gratified by the support that the community is showing uh, by production of these masks. Uh, I would also like to uh, 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 make mention of how important this kind of activity is because we talk about social distancing. It's really physical distancing that we require to uh, combat this coronavirus. I would contend that we need to be socially connected during this time of physical distancing. And so activities like this, where we're able to virtually come together and communicate are so very important, especially for our frontline workers. Because the last thing you want to have individuals are, are putting their own safety at risk is to um, be socially isolated when they come off the job. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we're encouraging, uh, particularly for our frontline workers uh, in the healthcare industry, is to maintain, support one another, uh, maintain uh, social connectedness. Uh, we have the technology to do so. And um, uh, again, just want to acknowledge the great support from the public. It's not just the mask, it's meals. It's encouraging. We had a public safety um, siren parade come through the campus the other day with all of our local um, um, uh, police departments, including uh, Laurel, participating in that. And we appreciate that. Mm -hmm.
Thank you very much. And you brought up something that's very um, important to remember, that there are people who are feeling isolated. It's, it's gone beyond social distancing. It's, it's social isolation. And that's why the mayor's uh, chat with the senior citizen program is so important. So far, Mayor, we already have close to 40 people who have volunteered to call our seniors and, and check in on them. Um, seem, it's, we're really going to put it into force on Sunday night at 730 because there's a lot of people who need those phone calls. Good. That's great. Thank you. Audrey, if I could take just a, um, a moment. I'm getting some text messages about the Amish market again. Um, mm -hmm. I want to just... We heard what the chief said. I want everybody to understand it is a statewide um, executive order that the governor has put into place, which requires uh, people that work at these um, facilities now to wear masks, uh, along with other measures. They have been, the Amish market has been educated. Now they will be held accountable. So I think we've uh, educated them. Uh, I'm hopeful that uh, that takes care of the issue there. If not, I encourage people to take pictures um, and, um, you know, if there is a violation and let us see that because a, a picture says a lot um, when we go and visit these stores. We're not in the business of putting people out of business. We're trying to help business. We're trying to help the community. And it's going to require all of us, as I said in my remarks, all of us working together. I did want to say just one other thing. We are trying to, when we go out and buy lunches or we do things uh, or dinners, depending on when you're here, um, we've been trying to support our local business, and so I encourage others to do that as well. I've probably put on 20 pounds more now that I've been out eating it. So you're the one that's uh, the Takeout Tuesday person? Is that you? That's not my idea, <laughs> but I, I take out Tuesday, right? <laughs> take out Tuesday. Um, but I did want to talk about the masks, because if you are looking, the city... Um, was able to find uh, two businesses here in the community. There may be others. Uh, Zips is um, selling um, masks uh, for a reasonable price, I think, reasonable price. Uh, these are uh, not the paper. These are the, as you heard from the, the way the doc has his material. And also Marilyn Johnson down on Lafayette Avenue, um, her business also. We purchased roughly a couple hundred masks from these two, uh, two individual businesses. Um, not only to help them, but also to make sure we had the supplies we needed for our employees as well. That's Thank good. you. While we're on the subject of masks, um, I think we need to reiterate that the governor's executive order requiring masks and all retail or organizations goes into effect 7 a.m. on Saturday. And so that's when uh, customers will have to have those masks on and also the employees, 7 o'clock on Saturday, everybody needs a mask. Even as they're, they're delivering now yes. food and other things, it, yeah. it also takes care of that. So it's, it, we're ramping it up a notch. Um, I, Dr. Yu, since you still have your mask on, can you quickly just demonstrate to everyone there is a proper way to take the mask on and off. So so that you're not just nullifying all the good that you've done by wearing it. So, so sh walk us through it. How do you do it properly? Yeah, basically, if you have your mask on and after you finish using it, uh, it's really easy for us to just easily grab it. But when you do that, you're actually exposing, you're, you're contaminating, you know, getting in contact with, if possibly, any virus. So we always recommend just going by the ears and pull it this way and then just toss it in the trash can, but don't try to scrumble it or anything like that. So that's our best recommendation at this time. Uh, pull from the ears and then pull it out and then put it in the trash. Now, when I go to the grocery store, I mean, I'm wearing masks and gloves. Correct. So when I get back to my car, yeah, when you get back to your car, the recommendation, because of the gloves that you just used in the shopping, uh, in, in by doing all your shopping, you want to be able to t take that out. And if there's a nearby trash can or something like that, you could go and put it in there. However, another recommendation that I've read up on is having a separate bag for it so that when you get, get in your car, you take everything off and put it in that bag, wrap it up and then dispose of it when you get to your private home or something like that. Because I think a lot of people may be forgetting you've got to clean your steering wheel, you've correct. got to clean the door handles. That's you correct. Know, you don't just do all this good stuff when you're in the grocery store. When you get back in your car, you're bringing all yeah, those germs in there. So clean those uh, steering wheels, those yeah. uh, door handles, and, and things like that as well. 
basically you just whatever possible and all of us we were just here and some of us when we finish talking we try to wipe the desk the top surface areas that's actually what we're encouraging just try to do that more often you can't now. clean enough no i think we have a call do we still have a caller on the line that's uh waiting to ask a question caller just uh give us your name turn down your television and go ahead and ask your question hello uh, this is for either the mayor or any of the doctors. Um, just based off the information that you've gotten so far, um, would you say that all these practices are actually helping, uh, you know, the social distancing and wearing the masks? Um, are you seeing uh, a difference because of this? Thank you, uh, Carla. That, that question is excellent. Um, yeah, using just let's use New York as, as an example. You know where the the surge it was really revved up last last week, and they're still on it now. But I, I think nationally we're beginning to see that as we're practicing these measures that I recommended, we're beginning to see a little bit of a decline. Um, it's not that great. I mean, some some uh, some of us may look at it and say, oh, okay, look like we're getting there, but the more we are social distancing, the more we're washing our hands, being more cognizant of our environment, I think that's helping uh, the surge to be able to level off. So we encourage you to continue to do that. Uh, believe it or not, I think if we continue this way, we may be able to see this wind down some, sometime in the near future. We're looking at June, July, or something like that. But if we don't practice all these declarations, then this is gonna be for a long haul for all of us. Thank you, Dr. Unebu. Let's t uh, take a look at an email that we got into our Laurel OEM at laurel.md.us uh, email address. Uh, this person would like to know, uh, how safe is it to be tested at FedEx Field? Is this the only place we can go, and does it cost a lot to get tested there? Anybody have an exper experience with uh, testing at FedEx Field? Yes, Audrey, I'll answer that. Yeah, mm -hmm. FedEx Field um, is up and running. Uh, it's very safe. Uh, you can either, either drive through or you can walk up. Um, you have to have an appointment, so you have to call the uh, Corona's hotline uh, health department and, and, and get an appointment. But they are up and running. Um, the If you don't have money to pay for it, that's okay. Um, they have different lines, so when you go up to be tested, if you do have health insurance, you'll go to this tent and then you'll go to get tested. If you don't have health insurance, you'll go to that tent and then you'll go get tested. They don't turn anybody away. So th that's not the only site. Uh, that's the main testing site in Prince George's County, but there's one in Montgomery County. Uh, there's several sites around that you can, you can go. You're not restricted to go in just the, the one site. But um, the FedEx site is, is a large site, and they're testing quite a few people, but it is safe down there. Um, can you talk a little bit about the need to get tested? You know, this is the type of time of year where all everything's coming into bloom. You know, you don't know if you have allergies or if you have early coronavirus symptoms. Can, can you help us out with that? When do you need to seek medical attention? I'll just, before I'll turn it over to Dr. Nebu, uh, because uh, for 42 days I've been his closest partner. Um, he's told me that first off, you have to check with your primary care if you have one. Uh, they know your history, and there again, it could be flu something, but uh, they know what symptoms to look for. If you exhibit them symptoms, then they can authorize a test and you can get a test. If you don't have a primary care physician, you can call the hotline and they will hook you up with one and they will also screen to see if you have the symptoms and if you do, and then they'll give you an appointment that way. Thank you. Is that correct, doctor? I'm gonna be a doctor at the end of this too. Right, so is a, is a fever um, one of the biggest telltale signs that you have um, possibly been exposed to coronavirus because I'm hearing a lot of people talk about dry coughs and and sore throats and things like that but they don't have fevers 
um, is the fever the trigger that's really saying you need it you, if you have a combination of things that you've got that fever you could be in trouble yeah actually that's one of the signs and symptoms that we're looking at but that's one of the major ones uh, as you can see even in establishments before you get into this establishment, they have to check your temperature and everything because that's one of the telltale signs. But we, there are various different signs and symptoms that may occur. Um, even I have a colleague of mine, orthopedic surgeon, all he had was just generalized body aches and pains. Eventually he was tested positive and then later on he started having the respiratory problems. So again, um, fever is one and then respiratory problems is the other. Did you see the police chief slide a little bit further? I noticed that. <laughs> as soon as you said that, he was he was gone. <laughs> Halfway down the, uh, you know, Sandy Spring Road by now. RJ, um, let me let me um, uh, yes. uh, on the flip side of that, I, I also um, we are trying to apply some degree of triage so that uh, 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 individuals uh, do not uh, present to places like an emergency department unnecessarily. Um, however, let me just say, if there is any concern about um, shortness of breath or respiratory symptoms uh, that might suggest pneumonia, uh, that is when we do need to see you in the emergency department. So shortness of breath, um, uh, which is really one of the um, screening questions that are asked uh, when we do this kind of screening that Dr. Negbu um, talked about, is a reason to come into the emergency department. Thank you very much. Mayor Mo? I just want to add to, from my days of riding fire equipment and EMS, and the docs may want to talk a little bit about this, um, especially if you have these signs and symptoms and you're at, you may be at home mm -hmm. and you may have to call fire and rescue uh, EMS uh, to come there. They're our first line of defense. Um, and I encourage people to take the opportunity Maybe even sit down tonight when we're done here. Write down your medical history, write down your phone numbers, write down the important information because it's, um, nobody's going with you in the ambulances and nobody's coming to the hospital. So that information is crucial for your health and I would encourage you to do that. And I don't know if the docs want to talk a little bit more about that, but that is very important. No, absolutely. Um, it's uh, uh, critically important for, particularly because, as I mentioned, um, we have a, uh, a, uh, a fair number of citizens who do have underlying conditions. And, and for uh, the knowledge about those conditions, and, and, and uh, particularly if you're coming in in, in, in extremis, uh, we need to know what's going on and, and, and having that information available uh, is really a key component to the treatment plan. So, uh, Mayor Mo, I, I thank you for, for pointing that out. That's a, a uh, and not just during a pandemic, uh, anytime, uh, really important for us to have that, uh, that information about uh, what's going on with your, with your uh, baseline health. Okay. We have a caller um, that would like to ask a question of our panelists. Uh, give us your name and go ahead with your question, please. A lot of things are going virtual, and a lot of doctors are saying, I had some, I had some symptoms, and they called and they said we can do telemedicine. Is that really beneficial? And also, can you speak to how do we stay mentally healthy when we fight a pandemic and it's hit everybody's family pretty hard? Anybody want to take that one? You, 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 we keep, we're learning all these new phrases yeah. like telemedicine Tele now. Absolutely. Tele well, te telemedicine is the big You know, thing. there are uh, unintended consequences of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of stress and strain. And um, one of the um, things that we are uh, absolutely leveraging in the healthcare industry now is technology. And um, we are doing uh, a lot of our care within the hospital. Uh, with the use of, of, of telemedicine so that we limit the amount of exposure so um, we can uh, access consultants that we may need uh, to help us with the care of COVID-19 patients uh, remotely. Um, that helps us to not have um, a strain on our personal protective equipment in the hospital with a whole uh, rack of people coming in and out of rooms. It uh, also it, it limits exposure. 
Uh, and in terms of what the caller's question is, uh, a number of physicians in the community are continuing to uh, interact with their patients remotely using uh, uh, telemedicine. Frankly, the fidelity of the equipment um, is such that the, uh, I do think it is a, a benefit and I certainly think it's, uh, I don't want people not to, 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 I don't want people to ignore their health care because we are in, um, in this state. So many uh, local physicians are leveraging the technology to stay in touch with their patients. So I do think there's benefit there. And then we'll actually see uh, how it sticks on the other side of all this. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, we have an email question. Uh, this is for you, Mayor Mo. Um, this citizen would like to know, how can we as citizens support our small businesses during these challenging economic times? Um, I, uh, as I stated earlier, I think um, they can support local business, um, small business. Um, a lot of the restaurants are doing curbside and carry out. We encourage you to, to do that as well, but it's not always just about food. Uh, when you need to go get your essential um, items that you'll need, you go to the different uh, stores. I encourage you to shop here locally in Laurel. Uh, keep the money in, in Laurel and our local businesses. And I encourage those that may be employers looking for those that have been um, laid off or put aside um, until this is over, um, that um, they advertise here locally as well. Um, you know, we've got a ways to go on this and um, you know, nobody has a crystal ball to know when we're gonna be able to open these places back up. But the more that we can shop locally here in the city, that is supporting local um, businesses, and that's important during these very, uh, uh, during these times in crisis. I just wanna let the everybody watching and listening know that you can call us with your questions. And here's the phone number, it's 240-294-1308. Thirteen oh eight. I wonder if anybody has heard much from the little ones in the community. How are the kids holding up? Um, in any news, and what are you hearing from the, the children in our community? Schools have been out for months now. Everybody's getting stir crazy. I have some senior high school seniors that live on my street. They're devastated at the closure of school, no prom, no graduation, things like that. Um, should we be? paying especially close attention to our children during this pandemic? Well, as a pediatrician by training, uh, mm -hmm. yes, we do need yes. to pay attention to our, to our children. Uh, I mean, this is a stressful time. The, the impact on, um, on families is, uh, uh, is profound. We're in uncharted territory here with um, uh, trying to keep children occupied. I, I think that, um, uh, we've seen some creative ways to engage. Some 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 um, school districts are are uh, attempting to continue instruction um, during this period of time, and I, I do think we do need need to pay special attention to to uh, to our kids. And uh, when we when I talked a moment ago about social connectedness, kids need to be included in that as well. One thing we've done in our family is um, to to conduct a a uh, a, a weekly. Um, I, I don't want to give any proprietary preference. There's a lot of platforms out yes. there through which you can can do family um, chats and family meetings, and and I would certainly encourage parents to include uh, include their kids in that. Um, but um, yeah, we absolutely have to pay attention to the kids. And I, I, my kids are adults now, but I, I feel like I talk to them more now than I ever have that, in their life. Um, texting, I mean, daily and calling. Mm -hmm. um, I think, is that part of the stress of just, you want that connectedness, you wanna mm -hmm. know that you're okay, and obviously they wanna know that their parents are okay. Yes, I'm experiencing the same thing, Audrey. I, I, my, my, uh, my young men, um, have uh, never been in, in more contact, even as we sit here to th this mm -hmm. evening, um, mm -hmm. too. And I think it's uh, it's only natural that families want to stay connected, check on each other. I've heard from friends who I haven't talked to in in years, uh, just check it up. And um, so again, I, I I do encourage us to, although we are physically distancing, to stay so socially connected. Okay. 
want to, I'm seeing some interesting comments up on um, Facebook. Um, I saw Marilyn, it's called the um, Sewing Design Studio. So Marilyn Johnson, the mayor, had mentioned she was making face masks. And, she, and I believe her business is on Main Street. She's on Lafayette Avenue. So it's uh, sewingdesignstudio.com. Marilyn Johnson at sewingdesignstudio.com if you want to talk with her about getting a, a face mask. Thank you, Jim Cross. Jim Cross is even providing the phone number. Thank you, Jim. The phone number is 301 604 4139 if you would like to uh, find out about those homemade face masks. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, and I have to give um, a special note and word of gratitude to our social media specialist, Corrine Kobach. Um, she is doing a fantastic job. I mean, for the last six weeks or so, she's been posting pretty much seven days a week. I mean, really, seven days a week, um, all kinds of information. And um, what I love seeing are the virtual classroom posts that she's been putting up, and even things that you're seeing in the community like NASA. Um, NASA has some space programs for kids to tune in. And um, so we're trying to share all those kinds of information. And, and pretty soon, we're going to do a, a Facebook Live or some kind of chat with educators about how they're engaging their children um, and how to keep the kids engaged while they're being basically homeschooled by very tired parents who have never done this before. So um, thank you, Corrine, for looking out and finding all those great stories. I know the parents out there really appreciate that. Um, and also, I'm getting a note here, on Laurel TV, um, we have added a lot of children's programming. So throughout the day, you will see, um, first thing in the morning, there's cartoons on for kids just to get them up and get them, get them going. But we have a lot of educational movies and things like that that are on Laurel TV too. Um, one of the callers was asking, how do I find it? Um, if you live within the city of Laurel, Laurel TV is on Comcast channel 996 in high definition. We're also on Comcast 71. And um, if you're a Verizon customer, you're on channel 12. So that's Laurel TV. And they're handing me another note, just like they do in the telethons. Um, this is from Facebook. Um, can kids get involved in volunteer efforts, or is it too s soon for them to do that? Steve, do you have anything for, for the kids out there that want to help? Most of the uh, volunteer programs that we're running in, uh, from the Emergency Operations Center, you have to be 16 years of age or older. But if you are 16 and older and you want to volunteer, just contact us through the Laurel OEM uh, at laurel.md.us or contact your department who's handling and coordinating the volunteers. Uh, yeah, we, we accept uh, uh, if you're over 16, we definitely would, would look for you to help. Right, if, especially when you're talking about the food distribution program and, and things like that. 16-year-olds um, can certainly do stuff like that, so we appreciate all that, all that help as well. Um, let's see, I'm reading a couple other questions here. Um, this is, as a resident, I read that we cannot show up at Laurel Medical Center if we exhibit COVID-19 symptoms. So should we just call 911? So the Laurel Medical Center, um, pre-COVID, um, has a, a, a freestanding emergency department. So that has not changed. Mm -hmm. Citizens can certainly um, access the uh, Laurel Medical Center through the emergency department. The um, entity that I talked about earlier, the Laurel 345 project, where we are recommissioning floors 345 for COVID patients, mm -hmm. um, is, is expressly designed to admit uh, patients who require inpatient care for, for COVID, but certainly citizens are, um, they have never not been able to access the emergency department. And uh, certainly if, um, if there is the need for them to require inpatient care, they can be admitted right there at the Laurel Medical Center. So, and and, yeah. and the three four five project will be staffed beginning next week. You hope? Correct. Um, it, it's 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 uh, several components: um, um, staffing, equipment, obviously, because 
Uh, let, me, let me just say, the, uh, there was a good job of decommissioning um, a year and a half ago, uh, so we essentially had to rebuild those floors. So uh, it's staffing, it's been um, totally refurbished and, and equipped, and we'll be ready to go next week. Thank you very much. And I was noticing that, and uh, Jenny, I think it is, I hope you're still watching. Um, Dr. Wright just answered your question about staffing LRH next week. So um, that is the hope, he says, so equipment and, and things like that are coming in daily. Also, I'm seeing some questions about um, kids helping each other via social media and using those ties to stay connected with their friends. Um, this is the one time I think you probably will let your kids spend a little bit more time on social media when they're isolated. Um, let's see, we have another question. Parks and Recreation is posting virtual activities for all ages on their Facebook page too. So um, I bet Joanne Barr is probably watching and call that in to remind everybody. So uh, thank you, uh, Director Barr, for letting us know that Parks and Rec has a lot of uh, virtual things that you can tune in and find out about as well for, for all ages. Um, so check out the Parks and Recreation um, Facebook page as well. Um, let's see, I'm getting one more question. Okay, a quick programming note. Some of you heard music during the programming. We have uh, called our technicians and that should be clear now. So uh, that's a, for those of you watching on Laurel TV, there was some music playing where we've worked on it and try to get that fixed for you. Um, let me just do a roundup of all the panelists uh, as we wind things down and see, do you have any final thoughts, things going on? Um, Chief, let's start with, okay, I guess you're pointing to Dr. Yu. Dr. Yu, you want to have some final thoughts for us? Well, um, the journey um, is it, here, and it's all of us. And I think uh, thanks to Mayor Mo and the, count, um, county um, the council members and also the city of Laurel uh, staff for a uh, job well done in making sure that the citizens of the city of Laurel are uh, actually well and they adhere to the recommendations of the medical professionals. Um, it, it's an honor to be with um, Dr. Wright and Dr. Hall, uh, working with them closely, um, making sure that uh, the, the citizens of this city are well cared for. Uh, it's also thanks to my bosom buddy, uh, Steve <laughs> Allen, uh, for, uh, it's an excellent, uh, supporter, uh, someone who you can reach out to easily and he can be able to give you that support and vice versa. And then the Chief Hamill, um, the collaboration that we had a few days ago, uh, it kind of touched my heart uh, to be able to uh, render my services uh, to the officers. Um, but again, let's continue doing what we're doing, uh, social distancing, washing your hands more frequently, covering up uh, more frequently, uh, that should be able to help us during this era. Thank you. Steve, did you have some final thoughts that you'd like to share? Um, will the EOC remain partially activated over the next little bit? Uh, yes, yes, it will be activated partially until this thing is over. Um, I noticed one of the questions that somebody raised, they wanted to know what the uh, Prince George County Health Department Corona's hotline Number is 301-883-6627. So if you have any questions about testing or anything about the coronavirus, please call that. If you don't have a primary care physician, please call that. One final note that I, I would like to say, it and I have been involved with multiple disasters over my 50 year professional career doing this type of work. And I have to say that the team that is here in Laurel is absolutely fantastic. And uh, I wouldn't want to be any other place but Laurel uh, and working with this group and the citizens. Uh, the hospital with Dr. Wright, uh, Dr. Udibu, who it's taken me almost two months to get his name correct. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor, the city council, uh, Bill Goddard, our city administrator, Lou Ann Crook, our deputy, all the department heads, yourself, Audrey, everybody. It's a great team, and, and this kind of event brings people together. And uh, we're certainly together, and to reemphasize what the mayor says, we will all stay together, and we will beat this thing. Thank you.
Chief, we're not going to let you off that easy. I just got another question for you um, before we wrap things up. It says, today I watched a news story where police officers in another part of the country use physical force to subdue a citizen boarding a subway. What protocols are your officers instructed to use if dealing with someone who is non-compliant with the governor's executive orders? So I'll drive already explained, but I'll do it again. So we're doing educate, inform prior to enforcement. So far, we haven't had to go to the enforcement phase. Our officers are highly trained, um, highly skilled in what they do. Um, we prefer that we wouldn't have to make arrests. We prefer that we don't have to cite people in this. I'm not going to comment on what occurred in another jurisdiction. I'm certainly not going to comment on something I haven't seen myself. Mm -hmm. But um, rest assured, our officers are, are skilled in applying the law in a proper fair, constitutional fashion. We practice constitutional policing here on the Laurel Police Department, and we will continue to do so. Here's the easiest thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody's upset. Everybody is a little frayed around the edges right now. I'd ask people just to do a couple things. Take a step back and think, if this was my family member that could be placed in danger, how should I act? Wear, wear your mask. Practice social distancing. Practice safe sanitation, wiping down, um, uh, uh, um, wearing gloves if you have them, uh, social distancing. For gosh sakes, wash your hands. We do all that. We don't have to get to this discussion here. We do all that. We keep each other safe. We keep the community safe. We're all in this together. Let's come out the other side of this in a safe, responsible way. Thank you. Thank you, and, and happy birthday to Dylan from all of us from the city of Laurel. Um, Dr. Wright, did you have some final thoughts? Yes, uh, again, um, next week we'll be welcoming uh, some 400 uh, new frontline heroes, medical professionals who will be staffing the uh, Laurel 345 project. I, I just want to assure the public that the, um, the Laurel 345 project is not um, uh, taking staff away from the rest of the health system. We are, are bringing in contracted individuals. They're going through training now. Uh, so we're adding staff to be able to stand up Laurel 345 and um, uh, welcome them to the Laurel community. Um, and uh, again, I, I so appreciate the support from the community and, and uh, please keep us in your, in your prayers, all the frontline providers, public safety, healthcare community, uh, we appreciate all of the support from, from the citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Mo, final thoughts? Dr. Wright, I just want you to know I have a couple businesses that are prepared to buy lunch at the hospital for the workers there. I just don't think they knew it was going to be a little over 400 people. <laughs> but I'm going to make sure they know. They wanted me to let them know, so I will do that. Um, again, I want to thank Dr. Wright. I want to thank what's going on at Laurel Regional Hospital and uh, at the University of University of Maryland, excuse me, I'm going back ways. Um, we look forward to um, working with you, Doc, um, as well. I just want to absolutely thank the Laurel community. I've always said, you know, it's, uh, we as elected officials some kind of are in the spotlight, but it really is all about the community. It's about the people that we have in this community that really do care, that do things like want to buy lunches for people. We've had them come to City Hall and do things so we've uh, before it got as bad as it's gotten we were actually had volunteers out there dropping off pamphlets to residents in a um, city of laurel citywide uh, lit drop um, so i want to thank the community um, in particular and um, ask for their patience as we move through this um, we will continue to provide uh, guidance, and as you heard Steve say, he gave you the number to the EOC. Please feel free to call us if you're not sure on something or you have some information from the police department and our code enforcement. We're going to continue to educate, and we're going to make sure people um, are held accountable and understand what these executive orders and these directives are, are doing and why we're doing them. The sooner we can get hold of this and flatten that curb, curb as they say, um, the, the better it's going to be for all of us to hopefully get back to, I don't think we'll ever be normal. There'll be, for a long time, I think we'll be 
seeing some changes. Um, but I do want to thank the community. I want to thank uh, Bill Goddard, our city administrator, uh, Lou Ann Crook, our deputy city administrator. They continue to run the day-to-day -day operations here. It's gotten a little bit uh, different where people are all at home working. Um, and uh, everybody, all of the department heads, our senior management staff, all of our employees that continue to get up and, and go to work, make sure that the services are provided, make sure that things are getting done, questions are being answered. Um, and to the city council who continuously worked with uh, the administration um, on this um, pandemic. And we're not done yet and they understand it and they've committed themselves. It is gonna be tight um, budget times coming up. I've been through this before and when we had issues. Local government, municipal government usually starts seeing the effect of of things like this, the economy uh, going south, usually 12 to 18 months. That's after the state and the county and others start taking care of what they need to take care of. It, it's, we're the last on the, we're at the bottom. So we will, for the, at least the next two years, we are gonna see some tightening of the belt, some things that will have to be done, some tough decisions. I think the council's up for it. I think the administration's up for it. We have good and professional department heads that understand um, what we're going through and how it's still going to continue um, for at least the next couple of years when I talk about budget and city. Um, but we will continue to move forward. We'll continue to make sure government works, and um, but it'll be a little bit different as well. So I appreciate everybody tuning in, Audrey, and thank you and your staff for being here tonight to make sure it got on Laurel TV. And hopefully we're going to take care of that as well with some other things that uh, we're working on. So again, um, thank you all. Thank you to all the panelists. Um, we really do appreciate it. And again, it's up to all of us to work together. Uh, remember, Saturday, what goes into effect um, and more importantly, um, just stay home. If you, it's, if you don't need to go out, stay home. And again, we're all in this together. Thank you all very much. If you would like to re-watch this program, it will be up on the Laurel TV YouTube channel. If you missed any of those telephone numbers, um, you can wind it back and, and find those phone numbers. And you can also check out the City of Laurel's um, Face, uh, website at cityoflaurel.org to get any of this vital COVID-19 information. Thank you all for watching. I'm Audrey Barnes. You guys stay safe.